Welcome everyone to Wrestling Is Cool, the coolest podcast on the planet. My name is Santi. I'm one of your hosts. I'm here with Sancho as well. He's supposed to be here. He's off camera. I don't really know what he's doing. He said he's planning a bit of some sort, but <laughs> Sancho? Sancho? I don't know. Folks, welcome to Wrestling is Cool, the coolest podcast on the planet. If you are listening to this on free feeds, you could be listening to this three days earlier over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Santi Zap, where you're going to get the Wrestling is Cool podcast three days earlier than everyone else. You're going to get the Raw reviews. You're going to get the SmackDown reviews. We just did a watch along of Wrestling. Oh, my God. Are you? Is this the bit? Yeah. Yeah. For audio listeners, yeah. he, he is dressed from head to toe in L.A. night garb. <laughs> Santi, baby! You thought the glaze would just stop with just audio? You thought the glaze could just be all of a sudden in your ears? Nah, 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 nah! The glaze is in your face now, my friend. It is live visually. It is time for L.A. night. I want to hear it from your mouth right now. Tell me right now. L.A. Knight, if it wasn't for the Bloodline, The Rock, and Cody, L.A. Knight's the best thing in wrestling. Say it right now. Right no, now. Well, no, I mean, I feel like uh, Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley no, are doing no, something. No, no, okay, no, no, all right, no, no, okay, no, no, all right. No, 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 no. You were like, oh, I've seen your reactions on the TikToks out of the thousands and thousands of TikTok accounts that you have. And you love the L.A. Knight segments. I like, How can you yes. cannot share the L.A. Knight glaze on your own Wrestling is Cool podcast, my friend? Dude. It's because I like LA Knight and I don't make LA Knight my entire gimmick like you have. You have turned you Sancho into this Sancho glaze machine into Sancho mania. This thing that I keep trying to stomp out in the in the comments section and in my Twitch streams. Dude, let this gimmick die. It's over. The gimmick is nah. dead. Nah, it, it, it is thriving. Right now, in the chat, in the comments, wherever you are, wherever you're listening, if you're listening in your car, pull over safely and type in Sancho Mania. The brush fire continues, Santi. You try to snuff us out. You try to pour out your little water all over us. Nah, nah, nah. We continue to thrive. We continue <laughs> what about to rise. water, you guys? What are you guys, a little plan? I'm just nah. I'm, I'm sprinkling water That's on you. you? <laughs> That's what you got, your little fire extinguisher, brother. Would okay. not put this out. We'll continue to thrive, my friend. Explain to me where you got all this. Is this is this WWE shop stuff? Oh, it's official. And I didn't use your stupid code either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't right. even I use didn't... my code? No. I wow. didn't use your stupid little code. You think I would use your code on someone that does not glaze LA Knight as much as I do? No, what do you what do platform. you see through those glasses? Is I, it... Dude, I can't see Jack. <laughs> I can't see anything. I see a big L and a big A, brother. This is not regulation. You cannot drive with these bad boys. <laughs> uh, I have to ask, what's the what, what did this kit cost you? Oh, uh, a pretty good penny. You know, actually, actually, <laughs> too you know, ashamed to a, share. <laughs> no, no, no. They have a, they had a twenty five percent off. Uh, about a, a buck, a buck, one hundred thirty. <laughs> you spent 130 for this bit you spent 130 doubloons just to come out and say Sancho Mania yeah, yeah. oh I'm yeah. glazing LA night yeah. just for yeah. this the, the, uh, you're committed, committed man I'm committed the Sancho Maniacs rise the, the people have spoken the, the voice of the voiceless is here you know we're rising up against the machine aka the Santi Zapiant you know <laughs> Well, Sancho, I was welcoming everyone to to wrestling is cool. Of course, The Rock still believes that wrestling is cool, still giving us the free rubs on television. You should change this to pro wrestling is cool at this point. You know what? I mean, I, look, we did it first. We, we did. Oh, listen, we said we were saying wrestling is cool. We were mm -hmm. calling him the final boss before he called himself the final yep. boss. So, Rock, I look, I know you're listening to this. Look, there's a nice spot over there in the corners where we can put what is your what is your vodka called? Tiramisu the vodka? Ter no, Terramana, you fool. Tiramisu. Yeah, like it like the like the dessert. Papatui, <laughs> Terramana, ter Terramana, Papatui, USFL, yes. XFL. Uh, seven bucks productions black adam we could we could we could run a black adam trailer throughout the entire show we don't care. yeah yeah papa tui oh that's right that's his cream right yeah that's the yeah 
Uh, the, the man is so bold. He can sell shampoo to you, and he's bold. You dude, know? I was I'm thinking not... Baba Booey. I'm like, I thought, what, <laughs> what, what does The Rock have to do with Baba Booey? The Rock will, I, I, I want to wager a lifetime bet here. The Rock will follow me first before you. I doubt it. I doubt uh, that. I he highly will follow doubt me it. first before you. 100%. All right. All right. Lifetime bet till the lifetime end of time. Till, till the, the end, end of time. Till one of us goes. <laughs> Uh, well, folks, welcome to Wrestling is Cool, Coolest Podcast on the Planet. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by Sancho Mania running wild all over this podcast. Uh, you could be listening to this much earlier than everyone else if you happen to be over on Patreon, patreon.com slash SantiZap. Uh, I'm noticing you still have the tags. I'm assuming it's because you plan on returning it. Nah. Yes. I just didn't have time to take them <laughs> off before the bits. If you're listening on audio services, just do me a favor. Leave a review, out. whatever it might be. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment, a, a like. It just helps with the algorithms on wherever it is that you're listening. Sancho, it's WrestleMania weekend. Oh, it's yeah. It's coming up. And with it be WrestleMania, you've stumbled upon my WrestleMania Ooh. quiz. Well, I guess I threw you into the WrestleMania quiz. You didn't really stumble upon it. But I've got five right. WrestleMania questions for you. And I would love for the listeners and viewers to play along. Just five basic WrestleMania knowledge questions just to really figure out how much of a casual you are. I've kept them recent too, which I know is actually harder for you because you're an Attitude Era guy and a Golden Era fan. So I think you're gonna you're actually gonna struggle with these. Are you ready? Sure. All right, these aren't too hard. First question, Sancho, what yes. current WWE superstar played a background gangster during John Cena's entrance at WrestleMania 22? Uh, boy, dude, there are so many. I want to say what current wrestler you said played a background? Yeah, he had all the way back at WrestleMania 22. So we're looking at like 18 years ago. It's not The Miz, is it? No. Mm, I'm out. All right, I'll give you a hint. Uh, WrestleMania was in the state of Illinois. It was not CM Punk. It was CM wow. Punk. Played a background gangster riding alongside John Cena's car holding a Tommy gun during his WrestleMania 22 main event entrance against Triple H. Okay, fair enough. I like that. First X. Second question. Multiple choice. So okay. you have a 25% chance. You have a 33 and a third percent chance of getting, <laughs> getting this right. Final Steiner math. math. I love it. <laughs> Which of these victims was not part of the Undertaker streak. Mm -hmm. John Cena, CM Punk, Edge, Randy Orton. John Cena. John Cena, that's after. correct. It was at, that was the trick. John Cena mm -hmm. did lose to the Undertaker, but it was after the streak had already been broken. Well done. One for two. One for two. All right, third question. Which WWE superstar went the longest amount of time between WrestleMania matches? Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Shot in the dark here, Ric Flair? No, you're, you're, you're in the right vein of thinking legends. I'll let you guess one guess more. Again? Guess one more. Stone Cold. It is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Go. It was from WrestleMania 19 all the way through to WrestleMania 38. And if you wanted extra bonus points, he's also the longest person to go uh, between WrestleMania main events, WrestleMania 17 and night one main event of WrestleMania 38. All right, question three. Name mm -hmm. the only three brother versus brother matches at WrestleMania. There is a bonus fourth answer. You got the hearts, and then yep. you got the hardies. Yep. And then you're going to have the Usos. The Usos. There's there's a bonus kayfabe answer. No, oh, Undertaker and Kane. Undertaker and Kane. Well done. Look at that. All right. K kicking some ass here. Yeah. Last one. Who was the first person ever eliminated from the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. God. <laughs> so you have to think to the very Cesaro's. first Battle Royal. No, he, yeah, Cesaro's. Who was the very first person eliminated? Oh my God, I'm gonna take a random shot in the dark. He's thinking, folks. I'm thinking here, I'm going with uh, uh, Mr. Perfect Son, Kurt. 
Ah, uh, yeah, you're thinking Michael McGillicuddy slash Curtis Axel. That yeah, is yeah. incorrect. You would have never ah. gotten this one. It was a guy named Yoshitatsu. Ah, man. Yoshitatsu, the first ever person eliminated from the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. That's WrestleMania. For Are you excited at all for this Battle Royal, the upcoming uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? I don't No. No, I don't think so either. Even WWE has acknowledged, uh, acknowledged that th this Battle Royal is just not a a WrestleMania worthy thing anymore. There's nothing that comes from it. There's never any follow up. Well, after Cesaro didn't get any push for it. I mean, what else? What else are you going to do? And Cesaro had the best strong, one of those best strongman moments in wrestling history. Sancho, are you going to wear those glasses for the whole episode? 100%. Well, <laughs> I just... I'm getting my money's worth. Okay. All right. You look into these eyes. I wish I wish someone could Photoshop your face in these glasses. <laughs> look in my eyes. What do, do you see? see? <laughs> Quick question right here. You stumbled upon some Santi. I'm going to go ahead and give you the first kind of first lyric in a song. You give me who's the theme song. Ready? You did not have that plan. There's no way Ready? you transitioned that well into this. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Ooh. Chavo. <laughs> clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's such a good entrance theme. That's it. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. On the spot. You know, we. On the we spot. All right. Uh, where the hell are we? All right, I'll do the giant. This this is a wrestle pre -ep, WrestleMania oh, episode. Yeah. This is like a vacation episode for us. We're just chilling because we're just so ready for WrestleMania. But we were talking to, about the Under the Jab Memorial Battle Royal. There's never any follow up. I will say, at the very least, I feel like there's some interesting contestants this year. We have Ricochet going in with a hot streak. We have uh, Andrade. Uh, and we have uh -huh. uh, Chad Gable as well, who shouldn't uh -huh. be in there, in my opinion. Uh, is there anyone that sticks out to you as a as a potential winner here? It's, uh, well, I think Chad definitely has a, a good opportunity to get it done, just considering that he needs uh, some good vibes going forward. My biggest question is, you talk about Ricochet. What are they building up Ricochet for? Something. I, look, is it going to be? It can't be another intercontinental run. There's no way. I almost feel right now that this build of Ricochet is is, is just WWE counter programming, which is sure. AEW. You've got Will Ospreay. All right. We think we have something that's better than Will Ospreay and Ricochet. And we're going to give our fans what we think is that quality of wrestling that you you sign for a ton of money in Will Ospreay. And we're going to give it to people here for free on regular episodes of Monday Night Raw, as opposed to only really getting him on upcoming PLEs like uh, like AEW has been doing with Will Ospreay. I know he recently yeah. had a match in AEW, but he's being used as a special attraction. If Maybe it's WWE being like, He's not a special attraction because you can get him on Monday nights every single Monday here on Monday Night Raw with Ricochet. Because I yeah. don't know where it's leading because they were doing something with Judgment Day and then all of a sudden it was a banger with Ivar. It, it literally might just be, uh, this is our 1995 Eddie Guerrero match of the night guy because he just had that awesome match with JD McDonough. I don't know if they're building to something in terms of storyline or if it might just be he's this counterbalance where we have raws and smackdown that are heavy in story uh aspects but then we're also going to give you the awesome ricochet match to balance it out as well but is it leading to anything i don't know it should logic dictates that it should what do you think uh well I, i'm gonna flex on you a little bit <laughs> okay flex i went to new japan pro wrestling in tokyo <laughs> and i did see ricochet versus will Ospreay, and it was amazing what a phenomenal match out of nowhere when i went there to go see kenny omega I do I concur with you, Doctor, in regards to AEW is being counter-programmed here by the WWE. I think they could continue to build up the roster. My concern, and I'm hoping that they don't do this, is that they're making Ricochet in line to be the first speed champion, which I really feel like it's a strange program to introduce literally the week of WrestleMania. I know it's like a whole thing with Elon Musk trying to get a lot of programming on X, a.k.a. Twitter. And so the WWE makes sense to be a part of that. But I don't, I just see this as another, hey, what's another, you know, inactive title in the future? And WWE Speed Champion is going to be one of them. And I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I'm making a prediction. We okay, never, brother, go we, ahead. We never see the Speed title on TV. It's, I know, but th does that mean Ricochet going to be the one that's going to be the first inaugural speed champion if you had to you had to go with your heart you had to go with your loins there my friend 
who would be the one to be the number it one? It is Ricochet. It, it would be. It would be Ricochet. Uh, he is speed. He I is. Mean, he is speed. There are guys in in NXT like Axiom, Nathan Frazier, that could be really great additions to um, Dragon to, Lee. To, Dragon Lee as well, and and all three of those guys that we've mentioned, they were used. My understanding in the prototype of speed during uh, dark matches. Uh, the two hundred five, right? It, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, if you make the inaugural champion Nathan Frazier, uh, respectfully to Nathan Frazier, because I think he's amazing, he's going to be great on on the main roster. Right now, no one would care. And when I say no one, I mean the grander ninety nine percent of casual WWE fans, which makes up the majority of the audience base, because they don't know who Nathan Frazier is. Because most people don't watch NXT. I think that's a fair statement. Are you drinking some matcha tea chai latte? What was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but if you want to put a recognizable name and face that fits the mold of speed. I think it's Ricochet as your inaugural. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I don't, I just don't like the idea of three minute matches. It's a strange concept. It's a bold concept. Like why not just put a full blown match on Twitter? <laughs> yeah. Like, are, are they just banking that they're, we don't have the extension pan, the, the, uh, the attention span to go ahead and, enjoy wrestling of that magnitude i don't know it's, it's a strange thing I, I think there's often things that WWE does just for business sense and i guess they're just trying to dip their toe in this water but regardless they're building ricochet up for something and i do like the idea that it is the counter program aew but hey and maybe because i'm wearing la night glasses but it's because the wwe will add a story and it will make whatever ricochet much more interesting than what real old spray is doing unless aew leans more into adding a story to these matches because what's wild to me is recently they've been doing these open challenges with the tnt belt with adam copeland aka edge and i'm like oh that's cool they're gonna do some u.s you know u.s championship things like just like they did with john cena and then who answers the first call right at the bell right out the the get-go matt cardona and i'm like i would have loved the heads up here yeah to know that matt cardona is going <laughs> to be on aw television instead i have to catch up to it and i understand that oh well if you really wanted to know you should have just tuned in every week i'm sorry i like i try to watch aew wrestling but please dude a heads up with a matt cardona on television with the history of those two i would have been there a hundred percent a hundred percent like I, I i get the trying to create a surprise a shock but that especially on collision a show that you're trying to get eyeballs on a show that's struggling to stay afloat yeah. a, a show that's gasping for air i would have been there too a hundred percent i would have tuned in if i had have known that matt cardona was going to be there you know what's interesting we're talking about some of these funky aew business decisions did you watch the cm punk interview with ariel hawani I only saw a couple of highlights. Yeah. But, uh, go ahead and break it down. For wow, the man. Like CM Punk, he he more or less was baited into talking about this. He clearly did not go in with the intention of bad mouthing AEW. It's just where the conversation in the interview went because Ariel Hawani's a very good interviewer and he knew that if he could get CM Punk talking about this stuff, that it was going to get him the most amount of views and the most amount of buzz. So Ariel Hawani, brilliant interviewer as to how he got to the conversation over there. But CM Punk really unveiled the curtain on a lot of the stuff that wasn't part of the NDA. He talked about how he straight up just asked the first time that he was suspended with the fight with the elite, like, dude, just let me go. There's no point. No, like your main guys don't want me here. Your executive vice presidents don't want me here. Just let me go. Tony Khan refuses to let him go, says he's going to build a show around him. Um, that's where Collision comes from. So that's that that corroborates the story that we were all told about Collision being CM Punk show. Um, the one thing that CM Punk went on to talk about, because we, we can talk about the Jack Perry stuff and how that went down as well, was just how he just doesn't see, and his words were, AEW is not a business, that it is a joke, that it is more or less just Tony Khan having fun with his toys because they're not trying to sell tickets. They're not trying to get viewership. They're just trying to have the best matches possible. And in CM Punk's eyes, that's not necessarily how you do business. And that's been a big critique, interestingly enough, of a lot of people of AEW where it's just like, yeah, these matches are fantastic, 
where's the hook? Where's the reason to care? Where's the reason for me to tune in every single week aside from the in-ring product? Because wrestling is more than just the in-ring product. I think we can agree that I would say that the in-ring aspect of professional wrestling at best is 50% of why wrestling is so cool, why wrestling is so fun. It is about characters. It is about motivations. It is about goals. It is about production, grandioseness. It is so much more than the guys and gals grappling in the ring, which of course is very important, but that seemed to me to be CM Punk's point where there doesn't seem to be a direction to actually make a biz like a professional wrestling business out of AEW that it's just let's go out there have good matches and maybe people will watch and when I when I hear things about Matt Cardona just randomly appearing on collision to have a, a match listen 20 years in the making more or less I'm exaggerating, 17 years in the making against Edge, and it's just, it happens? No no build, no reason to, to get excited for it, no animosity, no nothing between these two. It just happened. And it's funny that that happens, and then four days later, CM Punk unveils really the big problem with AEW, which is that, just... A, a lack of want to sell tickets beyond just having a really, really good match in the ring. I know that's going to get a lot of AEW fans fired up, but these weren't my words. These were CM Punk's. I find it interesting, though, is that CM Punk says he does not like to talk about behind the curtain the business of wrestling so much and that it's just something that, as you say, if, if someone asks him a question, he's going to go ahead and talk about it. There's so many other great things that came out of that interview, highlight-wise. Uh, that AJ is not going to come back to wrestling, which I wish she would because she's awesome. And she, I think the women's division would only benefit from her, uh, you know, having her around just like CM Punk has been a great benefit to having him around the locker room. At the end of the day, we all see that CM Punk being part of the WWE and every day he appears on a PLE, every day that he appears on a Monday Night Raw, it just shows you that it is AEW's loss every single time. In the very, very beginning of this Wrestling School podcast, we were there when CM Punk was fired. And we asked, is this going to be a good move for AEW in the long run? We said, yes. If this is a problem for AEW going forward, it makes perfect sense to let go of CM Punk if he's a problem in the locker room and if he's causing so much disruption. But we were missing the missing piece, and this is the missing piece that CM Punk gave us, is that AEW does not have aspirations beyond getting that five-star from Mr. Mel Meltzer. So... It's quite fascinating to see that that all go down and knowing that Tony Khan does have his eyes on the internet, does have his eyes on the Twitter timeline so closely that I wonder what their, his response is going to be because, man, that dude does not let anything go. I mean, he is very petty about every single thing that's said about AEW. And it, it's just wild to me that we were this close to having another contender in the promotions. And they did scare WWE, in my opinion, for a little bit. When they got Daniel Bryan, when they got Adam Cole, at that moment, I was like, okay, AEW serious. And then when they eventually got CM Punk, I was like, okay, now they're dead serious. They're going to be able to make some waves. They're going to make some changes in the business. And what's interesting is one of the, the things that were brought up in that conversation, correct me if I'm wrong, is they talked about the idea of these guaranteed contracts where it is hurting the business more so than, than they think, that the idea of paying these wrestlers out and not necessarily paying the work that they bring to the company is causing some big strife and big rifts in that company. And I, I mean, dude, yes, the wrestlers should be treated better and there should not be independent workers and they should have unions or ways to protect them going forward. And they should have retirement plans. But at the same time, this idea of paying wrestlers when they're not working and they're at home and they're doing nothing I mean, why would you put your body on the line when there's a wrestler that's sitting at home doing nothing and getting paid more than you? It, it, it's, it, it will get to you, man, eventually. But you talked about it as well. Jungle Boy, all that kind of saga. It's insane to get the, his side of that entire story, too. Man, um, <clears throat> excuse me. It is, it is baffling to me. Obviously, we have CM Punk's side of the story. There's more, um, like, us presuming CM Punk's side of the story is, is true. It's baffling to me how all of this went down. It just seems like Tony Khan doesn't have a grasp as to how to manage the asylum from within. You know, like, we talk about... Um, 
these guaranteed contracts, people staying at home. Uh, I feel like it's a different thing in the WWE because it's so established because they're it, because when you're gone, the machine keeps going, you know, you're just a spoke on the wheel and it's more than just uh, one person running the organization. It's a big conglomerate at this point. But it, when you look at AEW, when the wheel is spinning because of one guy, Tony Khan, and he can't um, properly uh, performance manage really is what I'm at, is what we're looking at. Uh, the people that he surrounded himself with that's problematic. The fact that he answered CM Punk with, "Well, what do you want me to do about it?" when he's ta when when he's talking about uh, a, a bunch of people acting out, uh, talking about Hangman Adam Page acting out. CM Punk tells uh, Tony Khan to please do something about it, and Tony Khan's response is, "Well, what do you? What am I supposed to do?" It's like, dude, like you pay everyone, you own this company. If you don't know what to do, then no one knows what to do. You have to be the guy that puts your foot down and 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 directs the ship accordingly. It can't be guys going on television and going into business for themselves, uh, going off script to, to because there's pettiness in the locker room. That's that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable in any workplace. Like just Im imagine working at Taco Bell and uh, I'm not going to make a taco for this guy. I'm going to I'm going to make him a chalupa. I'm going into business for myself. Fired! Fired! You're gone! If you don't do what you're supposed to do, if you don't do business in most places, you're gone. And that is the case in most you. organizations in AEW right now because it's in its infancy. It's not there yet. I have a question for you. What's up? Have you ever worked at a Taco Bell? Yes. Really? Yeah. Don't, don't lie to me right no, now. No, I was, I was 16. Tell me about this because I this is much more interesting than this AEW. Yeah, my, my manager was 17 years old. We were, uh -huh. we were all in the same high school and it, I mean, it was a super easy job. Wait, what do you, what do you want to know about what, my time I at Taco want, Bell? What's your like uh, <laughs> go-to secret item at Taco Bell? Like your, your oh. Santi special. Dude, I never got into that. I, I, I promise you there, I, there are people that would come in like employees that would come in high and make their own food. Yeah. Uh, we even had a situation where an employee got fired uh, because he came in to make an order. And uh -huh. he's just like, I'll just make it myself. Hop the, uh, uh, hopped into the back as a civilian and started making his own food. Yeah, got his ass fired for that. So there, but I, I was sixteen. He I was, went to that. That that's a better example of going to business. Yeah, for he went into business for himself. <laughs> he's just like, I'm not waiting for the machine. I'm going in and taking the brass you see, ring. You see that? Real cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real portion. Uh, no, yeah. you don't have no no interesting stories, dude. Honestly, I used to no, work I mean, my, my guy. My interesting stories is all just high people. I worked um, in in a really small town. It was a town of like thirty thousand people. Just a small town boy. I'm just okay. a small town boy making Looking tacos for it. the <laughs> boys. <laughs> yeah, but most of uh, dude, I had some funky jobs. I worked at Taco Bell. Uh, yeah. I was a paper delivery boy, but not like yeah, uh, you know, like going around at 4 p.m. I was like up at 4 a.m. in the morning to, okay. to deliver like the main newspaper. You, you weren't standing on the corner like, no, news here, yeah, news 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 here. Here. read all about it. Just <laughs> a dollar. It. <laughs> no, dude. And to me, and the freakiest story that I have to date is okay. um, I was delivering the paper at 5 a.m. in the morning uh, to a psych hospital. You saw a skinwalker, didn't you? Dude, I feel like every day I saw, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I, I witnessed ghosts and poltergeists and death every time i delivered to this place did anyone get like a chill in their spine when i said skinwalker and anyone skin talked, said ghosts? dude okay that, that this was the type of uh psychiatric hospital that yeah. uh when i was driving around uh near the psychiatric hospital there are signs everywhere literally every 10 feet do not pick up hitchhikers because it's it's escaped people from the psych ward. Isn't that freaky? You just mm. you just like a sixteen year old boy and you know, like are going around at five a.m. in the morning delivering papers to 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 the crazy ward. Ah. Was this after Taco Bell or before? This was Taco after Taco Bell. Dang, you left that life for that life. Ah man, okay. dude. <laughs> I, I I used to I used to do Subway. I worked at Subway when I was fifteen years old. Oh nice. That was a wild time. You, you were they... a sandwich artist. I was. I had the polo shirt. Dude, I took pride in my sandwiches. And I, I had my, I think I had my first mental breakdown in the sandwich line because it was like, uh, 
pretty crazy when the lunch rush was getting and all of a sudden my brain just locked up and I couldn't handle it and then they transferred me to a slower store, man. I mean, I was 15 years old and, and I got people yelling at me about their sandwiches. It was stupid. <laughs> you got stupid. transferred to the slow subway? Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, you, you're in the slow subway, bro? You couldn't handle the heat? I could not handle the heat in the kitchen. No, sir. No, no, sir. But I've had so many other jobs. I think probably my most interesting job was working at a bar in Austin, Texas on 6th Street, Dirty 6th Street. Dude, I've been in part of a lot of bar scrums, man, a lot of bar fights. There was so many. The only number one rule we had was anything goes inside the bar, but once it gets outside the bar, you're going to get arrested if you put your hands Dude, on somebody. I, I always wanted to work at a bar. Um, there it's was not that great. No? Okay. Uh, no. Because numerous times I, uh, I was asked to bounce work at a bar. for bars yeah but you are yeah you got the body type i i, I do but i was like i don't want to bounce i want to that doesn't sound you just fun want a party i want to party, party bro i want yeah. i just want to hang out with my boys <laughs> yeah, i get it i mean the, the one thing about it is i'm not a big guy i mean you met me in person i had to balance people with my brain i would go hey man there's someone outside for you and they're like really like, yeah 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 they're outside they're asking for you and then Right when they walked out, I was standing at the door like, you can't come back in, man. <laughs> <laughs> you had to big brain them? I had to be the Bugs Bunny of the entire situation. <laughs> um, but it, it was, it's, not a, it's not a fun job, man. The, the, here in Texas, the, we had to clean the bar afterwards, so we would get home like at 4 to 5 in the morning. And uh, it, it was fun for, you know, the age I was at there, yeah. ro ro walking around, doing my thing, and became a bartender and whatnot. And that was fun as well. But at the end of the day, man, it kind of set me up for a lot of great things because I learned how to hold the crowd's attention and I'll learn how to have fun and all that kind of stuff, fun stuff. But man, I'm so happy to be doing this though. This is so much better. <laughs> this so is much so better. much better. And I, I, I want to sympathize with all those people that grind yeah. it out nine to five. Cause I used to be just like y'all and I always tell our people work a side hustle. Side yeah. hustle will set you free. And, and you can be like Sancho wearing LA night glasses and, in a vest without with with the sticker still on it folks this is what you could be right here this this is what you can aspire to become yeah let folks welcome to wrestling is cool where we went from talking about the under the jam memorial battle royal to aew's woes uh to our jobs when we were teenagers that's just this that's just leather how we roll. is is booty cheeks <laughs> it's not real leather and it's hot i'm sweating underneath this thing dad <laughs> it's getting sweaty in here from my shoulder my lats right here oh uh, what about rest I have a t too. See? oh i know i actually didn't notice the t-shirt i thought you were just the vest you really bought the whole get up oh dude i want to buy some some timberlands soon <laughs> i have those i give them to you <laughs> wrestlemania hype WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Uh, they tried to, to give us some hype at WrestleMania for WrestleMania with this uh, go home episode of Raw where they blue balled us into thinking that The Rock was going to have a match with Seth Rollins. And they're like, no, nah, OK, may OK, maybe not The Rock. What about you, Roman Reigns? And it's like, oh, no, nah, just kidding. You guys thought it was going to be the two mega stars. Nah, it's going to be, oh, I'm solo. I have a thumb. You're not going to face the, the final boss. You have in you, your arsenal, you, 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 you're way. not going to face I hate the this. Tribal chief. Oh, oh I'm a life. thumb. Oh, 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 I'm solo. And you we got solo Sokoa, for God's sake. Come you're on. Just so mad because he just killed your boy. It was he done red, since. Red, white, and blue. It's your boy's Nothing. fault because no one benefits from a John Cena rub. Not even John Cena's masseuse's benefit from a John Cena rub. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Don't worry about it. All right. No, we're worrying about it. So John Cena's masseuse. Now we can move on. Um, were you were, were you disappointed in the reveal of Solo Sakaar? Did you see it coming? I see it. I saw it coming a mile yeah. away. I mean, yeah. when people when people want Doink the Clown, who do they get? They get Dink the Clown. It is what it is. You just accept the fate. But at the same time, I, I liked it. I mean, Solo talked on the mic for a bit. Solo looks good out there. I mean, Solo has been put in the work in the house shows. Stop hating on Solo Sokoa, bro. I mean, I, I mean, think he's the a... scariest jobber in the business right now. It's not his fault. It's what he's been served, okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's just served the That's slot. the heir to the tribal stuff. chiefdom. Yeah, which is kind of weird. They kind of forgot about all yeah, that. Yeah, they completely the forgot time. about that. The heir, I the about that. next in line. Then, nah. I, I want to I ask you a question right now. This may be hey, a man. controversial question, and this may divide us right now. This may divide us in the audience. This may kind of kind of sh you know unshelter those that felt like this is a home for their ideas and thoughts i think that the heel faction of the bloodline with the final boss is a better for wrestling and a greater return as an investment than champion cody rhodes 
Interesting. Okay. So you're just to lay it out for people. Uh, so yeah, you're saying say that having the rock as a heel and having the bloodline surrounding the storyline is mm -hmm. a bigger thing right now for professional wrestling than mm -hmm. what could be offered by a championship reign from Cody Rhodes. Is that what you're saying 100%. right now? Look at all the threads and all the things that you can benefit from heel rock. Now people will say, well, rock is not going to be around television this long. I get that. But look, the crowd is white hot for the rock to face anybody. Literally every face in the company, everyone cheers for seeing the reaction of rock versus Seth. Oh my God. Yes. That would be an amazing PLE match rock versus Cody. Yes. Give me more of that. The idea of the rock running the bloodline. Yes. Give me more of that. The Rock facing Roman Reigns, yes, I'm all in it. This, this is what I'm talking about. There's just so many possibilities for The Rock to do his thing as a heel champion or just anyone else is running the company more so than seeing Cody Rhodes run around as an undisputed champion. There's, there's limitations to Cody Rhodes I as agree. champion. I do, there's I do not, agree. There's not much you can do with Cody. What's, what's going to happen? If Cody Rhodes wins at WrestleMania 40, Cody Rhodes is going to, what, run around the bloodline, run away from the bloodline, just to be, continue to deflate the bloodline? No, I think it it'll on? be a situation where, like, uh, Generation 2 of Pokemon, Team Rocket, will be disbanded for a bit, and then it'll, okay, it'll try and come back afterwards, so what does closer that to Who WrestleMania 41. Who comes after Cody Rhodes then? The, the, Randy. I mean. Randy Orton is a good option. Here's Randy. Okay, look, look. Look, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but I'm going to – just uh, way on the other side as well and play sure. a little bit of a this devil's advocate great about a podcast yeah uh so the the benefit of what we're getting with the rock right now is a lot of what ifs are are sure. on the table a lot of what could be but i do think that the reality of the situation is that a lot of those what ifs a lot of those what could be's are will never be's because of the rock schedule because of his inability to pre uh, co concretely uh commit himself to the WWE on a full-time basis i think that's a fair statement i don't think that i'm overreaching there but still the what ifs Valid. are fun i think the what ifs are fun oh yes uh, that's what wrestling's all about the cody rhodes on the other side i think the what ifs are less expansious i feel like there is less of that but it is a concrete thing that we can get that we can celebrate that we can navigate throughout that is going to be on television there every single week that would in theory be on television and in every single ple every single month so i feel like you have to uh, way what do you like more like do you like the option of the what ifs like what could be if the rock were to continue to play this character because i do uh, and I do think that The Rock is here long term in sporadic patches here or there because he, he this is his company more or less, right? Like he right. he's got he's got skin in the game. He isn't just mm -hmm. being paid on an appearance basis. Like he he directly benefits from these giant deals with Netflix. He directly benefits from the new USA deal, from the speed deal. He directly benefits from the bigger picture of WWE business, which for somebody that's already that rich, that wealthy, the only way to entice someone like that is with big picture stuff, which is why The Rock doesn't do one-off movies for random studios. It's why he started his own studio because that's just where he's at as a as a career celebrity, as, as a famous person, as an uber mega rich villain. So if it's not appearances that are is going to entice The Rock, it's the big grandiose things that he can help build that will get The Rock here in front of us in our screens. And I think now with The Rock's position, he most likely sees that there is so much that he can directly do to help build every single step that directly benefits The Rock in the grand scheme of things as opposed to just a paycheck. 100%. And not only that the, it'll benefit The Rock, but it benefit everybody in that company the rock being involved in a program with you will be so monumental for that wrestler not just some one-off let me just show up and give the rock bottom to austin theory and then go on my merry way but i'm talking about a legit feud with the rock would be amazing and it will turn any face into the most popular face if you're feuding with the rock and i just think the idea of cody rhodes being screwed out of WrestleMania 40 in the harshest way, yes, it will turn off a lot of people out there who are like, look, if Cody loses, I'm out. There's, I've seen that a lot on the internet. 
There's people in our community that say the same thing. Do you think Cody it's Rhodes, the it's the Glenn dying in the Walking Dead situation? It's one of those situations that, yes to that too, but it's a matter of we've been along this journey and now we're just being bamboozled into being strung along a little bit longer. For our, We're being drained from our money wallets. We're being drained from our eyeballs to keep it, our eyes on the, the product. And I totally get that because it's like, when are we going to get this forever? When are we going to get this moment, this Cody Rhodes moment? But I think the idea of Cody Rhodes being screwed out of the Montreal screw job and then fighting his way back into the championship picture, it's a very interesting tale. But will we be patient for it? I doubt it. So that now leads me to the world of the other side of the coin, the post-championship Cody. Cody wins. Cody finishes the story. You get the nice thing about he finally did it for his dad. Dustin Rhodes shows up. Who knows? It feels like they're leaning that way. I mean, I think, I think Dustin Rhodes is going to show up. I, I have that good feeling about that. But you said, yeah, it's going to be vanilla going forward. But the only way I would think that they salvage champion Cody Rhodes is have him continually fighting the bloodline where the bloodline tries to get that championship back. And it becomes like another thing where TKO gets involved, where the Rockets involved to try to unsurp Cody Rhodes as best as way possible. But Cody Rhodes continues to prevail. And they have a unique opportunity to re redo Austin and Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon with Cody Rhodes and The Rock. And then eventually lead to a bigger PLE of Rock versus Cody. I think at this point, the WWE has to recognize that Rock versus Cody needs to happen as well. They would be dumb not to be dumb. Yeah, 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 100% that's happening. Uh, I don't think that we're in, a, in an era of WWE anymore where, uh, you know, I want to say that they, that they would blue ball us because, I mean, they have for little things. And uh, Copolis. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't think that yeah. they, that they're, it's too big of a match and it's, it's been such a focal point of this build of WrestleMania to the point where it would be a complete disservice to fans that have spent so much time uh paying attention to the storyline to not get that payoff from the storyline because I I don't think that the tag match is the payoff. It can't be the payoff because it, the tag match is a prelude to something else. You can't the payoff can't be the prelude to something. It can't be uh the night one main event. Is the night two match then the payoff? I don't think so because they haven't built it as such. I think the payoff is Cody Rhodes versus The Rock at some point or another. Think about how loud the pop was when The Rock was in the ring about to take out Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins smiles and then Cody Rhodes music hits. And in my mind, I was like, there's no way that these guys are going to get one up on The Rock. And then The Rock starts getting beat up. Then you think he's going to get put through the table. And obviously they yanked that away from us last second. But that little sneak peek, man, got me way more excited for a future non-existent imaginary match between Cody Rhodes and The Rock than the actual night two main event that's scheduled in a couple of days between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. That's how hype Cody Rhodes versus The Rock is. I'm, I'm hyped for a fake match. And The Rock was selling, brother. Oh, my God, yeah. The Rock yeah. was selling, dude. That was old school heel rock selling where he's just acting like he's just being devastated by each punch. So my question to you then is, Santi, how do we get there? How do we get to Cody versus Rock? Is it going to be the bloodline holding on to the championships again? Is it going to be the Rock screwing Roman out of the belts and the Rock becoming champion and Cody going after that way? Or is it going to be Cody Rhodes, champion, defending the bloodline away from that belt? I mean, the, the, those are the three roads. <laughs> oh, it's the glasses. It's the glasses. Yeah, I'm thinking like a wrestler. It's going to be those three opportunities. Well, which one are we taking here? I would, I would venture to say that they would most likely go with Cody Rhodes as champion in The Rock. That's trying the safe route. That Get is the safe. Here. It is the safe route. It is the safe route because I also can't fathom a world where Cody Rhodes wins back to back Royal Rumbles and still doesn't finish his stupid story at WrestleMania. I feel like at some point you need to turn the page, and a lot of people think that turning the page is ending the story. Turning the page is just going to the next chapter. True. And I feel like True. you can still tell a great aspect of Cody's story as champion with the the weight of the world, The Rock, trying mm -hmm. to take what he's earned away from him. And I still think that you can tell a really great storyline while giving us a good payoff at WrestleMania that doesn't feel like you've insulted my time as a wrestling fan over the last two point. years. Yes.
That's what I was going to say. It's, it's the insults. That's a great way to put this entire thing. Yeah, I, I do see that. I mean, it's a, it's a greater risk. I don't, think, I don't think The Rock ends up looking weak af, after this mania. That's my concern is how can they keep The Rock looking strong? Right. Because, I mean, you could say that who's going to eat the pin, right? The Rock Hear can't eat the pin. Hear me out. Oh, buddy. Here we go. How do we keep The Rock looking strong? How do we keep The Rock looking strong? Okay. The sure. tag match, uh, Ro uh, Rock and Roman, they win. Uh -huh. So it's going to be bloodline rules in night two of WrestleMania. We can still have the safe play of having Cody Rhodes win. Maybe even The Rock tries to get involved. Who knows? Cody Rhodes wins. But if you want to keep The Rock strong and feeling like the final boss, the show doesn't actually end with Cody Rhodes' pyro uh, hand up in the air with the, with the title. He gets his full celebration, but then he leaves the ring. And then there's Roman alone in the ring with The Rock looking at him disappointed. The Rock hits a rock bottom on, on Roman Reigns for disappointing him as the tribal chief. Then we move on because then you can tell the future story of the rock versus Roman while not turning the rock baby face and still having a way to be able to get us to rock versus Cody Rhodes in the future. And you keep the right. rock looking strong rock closes the show rock would love to close the show. You know that, you know, you know, the rock would love to close the show. So the rock is going to bury the bloodline before he leaves or steal the bloodline or evolve the bloodline. Kick out the Ooh. tribal chief, you know. Now we've got a, a story of a transfusion. Right? Yeah, yes. We have now yeah. we can tell the story of a fallen king, the fallen Ooh. king that's coming back to try and take back his throne. That's a st that's a story literally as old as time, right? We 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 can tell the we can talk about the greatest fallen king story in the Lion King if you want, right? Like you Simba. can you can you can tell the story of Simba coming back, Roman Reigns coming back to try and <laughs> topple. Wait, so Roman goes on a Akuna Matata there? Okay, just, no, no, yeah, man, he starts just, to hang out with the Alpha just, Academy. He <laughs> goes, <laughs> you know, the Chad Gable method. And thank you, Travel Chief. Thank you for so much for joining us. Oh my God! Hear me out. Chad that was it. Tim Timon and Otis's Pumbaa. Jeez, it's kind of perfect. <laughs> like it, that's it good casting. Worked. That's good casting. It, it, it definitely does work. I just, it's so interesting to me that, God, we are days away from Mania and all this being over, all this debate, all this podcasting, the pot and praying, hoping for the best, hoping that we nail a prediction right. It's all going to be over soon, dude, the road to WrestleMania. The, the exit signs right there for Philadelphia, my friend. Dude, and it's, we got here so quickly because I remember being, you, you weren't part of the community last year at this point, but I vividly still remember WrestleMania weekend the hype for it for WrestleMania 39, like making content for it, making predictions. And I swear I've blinked and we're right back here. And, and I feel like that is a testament as to how good professional wrestling has been. Even if there was a couple of months of garbage because Vince McMahon tried to come back and take over. He ruined Raw after Mania. There's, there's a couple of, 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 of rough weeks there, but for the most part, it's just been such a breakneck speed of how good WWE has been. And I'm just happy to be here. And I'm happy to be in this journey now with you, Sancho. Oh. It's nice to, to, to have you be part of, uh, of, of this world of professional wrestling. And hopefully the wrestling community has been treating you good, buddy. They have. I mean, I, I, I see the Sancho mania in the chat. And at the same time, people are, are being kind to me when I have, make videos. And it's, it's fun to forge my own way. Uh, I mean, and, and on Instagram and on TikTok, it's really fun to see those video essays pop off. I mean, if it wasn't for a spring break and a little bit of an illness, I'll, I'll continue thriving. But, hey, we're going to get there. And at the same time, I think the goal is in sight, man. I, I want to do the pre-show. I want to be on a kickoff show. I think we can do it. I think we could be like a, a little bit of like the Pat McAfee show where we can have our own offshoot WrestleMania, where we have our own dedication, where we're supported, sponsored by the WWE. And we have the, the WIC fans out there supporting us. We could do our own little pot out there live be awesome man that'd be that'd, that'd be something that'd be uh, something i, I want to just throw this out there because a lot of people are like i don't think sancho knows that the uh, that uh wrestling internet community um is is wic i think when you say that you mean wrestling is cool community right that's right okay yeah 100%. some people think when you say wic that you're talking about the wrestling internet community no yeah because they saw real ones no yeah real yeah, ones know that the, it's it's the wic is the wrestling is cool community the the, the, the cool ones by all the right? way the the wic logo that we have so clean so nice just 
So nice, so nice. You, you you have seen nothing yet. The merch is gonna be insane. Just like the Sancho Mania merch. Zero sales. I know sales. every time you go out there, you say zero sales. Well, you did not think about this one thing. <gasps> Mama Sancho buying the Sancho Mania shirt. She listens to the show. She watches the Instagrams. She watches the TikToks. She talks about how I should have said Moana when we talk about all the Dwayne The Rock Johnson movies. She is one of us. She is a Sancho Maniac from day one since birth. Sancho, yeah, do you but understand? Like, that's a default Sancho Maniac. That doesn't count. So, that's, that's a one. That's a that's default one, skin idiot. Sancho Maniac. That's one. That's one, you idiot. There you go. Boom. One all in right. your face. All right. Two shirts. I'd be impressed That's, if you could oh, do two shirts. Oh, yeah, two shirts. <laughs> yeah, you forget about me and my mom and my dad <laughs> and everybody else and Papa Sancho. You're like Listen, the kid Derek. that sell that that uh, that goes to sell chocolate bars and sells them all to their to their immediate family members within their household. Oh, 100 percent. I used to do that. There's no shame in that. You got to start somewhere. That's you true. You got to put. You got to start your business somewhere. The Boots Sancho the Mania ground. movement has to start somewhere, and it starts with you, the community. All right, we talked about the good old bloodline. We talked about it. We talked about Raw. I think, again, the reason why I brought it up is because I feel like Monday Night Raw feels like can't miss TV. I was excited to see it, and I feel like that previous SmackDown was that kind mm -hmm. of SmackDown, despite Jade Cargill's debut, which is quite interesting to me to see Jade Cargill. I think she looks like a million bucks. I think she is presented well, and I think she is definitely going to be a bigger star than she ever was in AEW. I think they are baby stepping her way forward. I think they did the right thing. They gave her a very simple promo, a couple of lines. And I dare I say she had a better showing than Mercedes Monet. And that's not a knock against AEW. I just feel that the promo they had for Mercedes Monet, they put her out there too long and they gave her two promos of the same type of theme. Whereas Jade Cargill comes out, says literally one line, says the women's division is the best in the world and I am the most unique wrestler out there because I am Jade Cargill, the headliner. And then she cuts that promo and leaves. Less is more. If you cannot stand out there that long, don't put your wrestler yeah. talent out there. And it was shocking to me to see, one, the CEO, Mercedes Monet. I don't understand the gimmick because she's not a CEO. <laughs> like, I, like, you know what I mean? When you have The Rock, who is the CEO out there, you have the, the Young Bucks, the EVPs out there. And then Mercedes Monet calling the CEO. It's a lot of confusion. And I just wish that Sasha Banks was in the WWE because she would have been perfect for this mania to save Bailey against damage control. But at the end of the day, we get Jade Cargill, Naomi, Bianca Belair, which we're wondering where she would be in this mania in a three way battle against damage control. I love it. I, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, Smart move by the WWE. Um, I want to put a pin on that in a second and talk about what you said about Mercedes Monet and, sure. and, and Jade Cargill. Um, I think the biggest difference between the two is the Jade Cargill aura, the Jade Cargill presentation. There didn't need to be much from her end from for me as a viewer mm -hmm. to be like, I'm excited. That's it. This is it. This is the future of the women's division. The, the entrance was exquisite. The atmosphere that she created was electric. And then I compare that to the Mercedes Monet stuff. And interestingly enough, I feel like her entrance theme does her such a bad disservice. I always quote Game of Thrones when I say, uh, I've never met a king that needs to call themselves the king. And I think it's in this in this situation, I've never met a CEO that needs to have a theme song where it chants CEO 50,000 times. It's 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 a different type of pipe in, uh, piped in uh, pop. That's what it is. You know, when it's chanting CEO, 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 CEO for 10 minutes, I feel like it's kind of tacky and it takes away from the presentation of how good Mercedes Monet actually is. And it like feels... Like, yeah, like they don't trust that the crowd would just organically chant for her. It feels like they're forcing a type of reaction with Mercedes Monet. Meanwhile, with Jade Cargill, uh, the they just let her presence create the reaction. And it absolutely worked. They, they blew it out of the water with Jade Cargill. I think as well, it's a smart way to have her at Mania in this 3v3 because it's going to protect her Absolutely. in the ring. It's not going to make her forced to wrestle 15 minutes. She's only going to be responsible for her action. And she's going to be a, uh, basically going to be the strong woman out there. She's going to have some crazy high spots. I, I, Kari Sane's going to be very easy to lift up and throw. And Bianca Belair, they're going to have a moment. And I definitely the main goal, I would say, out of this matchup is, yes, I think Damage Control is going to lose, but it doesn't matter if they lose or win here because... 
the no belts are on the line. It's they need to set up Jade versus Bianca in some sort of way, in some sort of like, oh, we accidentally hit each other type of thing. That is a must to start that program for Mania 41. Uh, yeah, it, I do think that it it is smart to to hide her more or less behind five sure. incredibly professional top of their game top of the line marquee women um you know in the WWE uh, she's only going to have to do one six of the work and i think that that mm -hmm. one six is going to be enough to get us all excited while still protecting her and it's going to get us excited for whatever future thing that they decide to do which i agree with you should be inevitably jade cargill and bianca belair did she have a better debut than okada uh i i would say so yeah i would say so as well i did you get the vibes of glacier when she came out with the snow. My vibe was Storm. Like the actual X-Men yes. Storm. Uh, obviously she's calling him, herself the Storm, but her theme song was do -ne 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 new 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 It's it's it a, more like Donkey Kong. There was a song in there that had a little Donkey Kong. No way. No. Okay, it's like All right, now we're just splitting hairs on on on, uh, on I, themes of fictional media. It chats with me. The comments yeah. are with me as always. My Sancho Maniacs. How could you possibly be closer with Donkey Kong than I am with X Men when she's literally Listen calling herself? Again, she's cool. literally Open calling herself ears. Storm and has no, long white the flushes white We're hair. Talking about the theme. We're talking about the theme. And by the way, she should stop the storm puns. It's not working for her. There's a storm of brewing, and <laughs> I am the one. Like no, 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 no. I'm here I to rain. I, honestly, they, I want her to lean into the storm puns. Oh God, I just it, it, nothing should, but storm puns. Uh, we're in the she midwest like uh, a, it's something like a like a dust bowl coming through <laughs> oh god the, the, she'd be more like she hulk dude she has that vibe where she she has that like well put presentation and then bam she like i did not think uh, i was like oh that must be her ring attire i don't know how she's gonna wrestle in that ring attire and then bam no nah, she's gonna wrestle in this diamond sharded bodysuit okay fair enough go ahead do your thing and i like her moveset i'm i'm starting to get used to the jaded thing i i, I think it's a long setup I always feel like wrestlers who have power should have like a bang, like a really fast finish, like the JBL clothesline from hell, like something mm -hmm. that just devastates you, the jackknife powerbomb, something that's just brutal in the, the setup of get, getting her in those fish hooks. Yeah, like the glam the slam. Plant. It, it yeah, should be that pop off powerbomb that she did on Dakota Kai. Dude, I feel like that nice. should be her finisher. There's not a lot of women on that roster could just throw down a pop up powerbomb like nothing. And imagine the pop if she does a pop up powerbomb to like a Nia oh. Jax in the future. No way. I mean, there's no I, way. I could see a world. I could see it. It might not be the typical pop up power bomb, right? Where it like throws her up and pops and, and power bombs her. It could be like Nia Jax tries to go off the top rope and then it just gets caught into a power that's bomb or not, something. That would never happen. Dude. You don't think, you're, you're, J, dude, you are doubting Jade Cargill too much. I am doubting Nia Jax to make sure she's in that <laughs> right spot to take that and again chat if you're hearing the phone go out that is santi he has important business yeah i apologize for that on. he has to keep yeah. an eye on that business because my man is trying to move on up yeah to get out of the rental into the real life house santi's house santi if you had a dream home whose house what, what, santi's house <laughs> well if you had a house my friend and you had a room that's like this is santi's room and don't give me a steam stream room but what would you have in this room that's like yes this is my room this okay. is my dwelling. Yeah, the, the biggest thing I've always, I've already said to Sarah, you know, because for those that don't know, a lot of people do know that uh, we're trying to buy a house and that's what we're going back and forth on. We're, that's why the phone's been going off because we've got, we've got a deal on the floor right now. All right. And they're, they're calling our name. Do you need name. me to go in there? Do you need me to close it out? I'll, I'll show up just like this. Yeah, just like, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't see it. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Give me your best and final offer. No, no, no. This is our offer <laughs> right here. Yeah. Uh, mini fridge for sure i'm a mini fridge guy give me a mini fridge in there um i love the idea fridge. of the old uh, having an old school uh n64 cabinet i'm not okay. saying just like a like a uh like an arcade cabinet that plays n64 games no i mean like in the bubble there's the n64 yeah. like the what you demo. would yeah, yeah the game demo i would love to have one of those either yeah. for an n64 or a gamecube but okay. it's one of those that i can change the game i don't want like uh there's only a or demo why don't you have one that where it's like it has all the games Oh yeah, it. I yeah. don't know. It, yeah, that is better ergonomically, but it's just not as cool. It's not as cool. Okay. Uh, okay. I would definitely have a, a nice retro game collection in there. 
Mm-hmm. I know you said not streaming. That kind of goes with streaming, but uh, I, I love retro games and I love when, when you got games in their nice cardboard box, still nice mm. and visible, nice and crisp. Mm, those are my favorite. Those are beautiful background props, in my opinion. Okay. Wow. Did not know you were such a big retro nerd. I lo- Dude, I, I used to like retro ga- uh, collecting a lot more. I sold a lot of my stuff during the pandemic, um, you know, to eat and... Prices mm-hmm. were through the roof during the pandemic for for a copy of Crash Bash on the PS1. So your boy had to jump in on that, and and I sold off a lot. I sold off a lot of my retro stuff. Random aside, you think if I should show up with the missus with his outfit on? I mean, you could try, see see how how it goes. Come I mean, on, dude. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. Who would not yeah. want to get with this? You know what I'm uh, I mean, that's facts. I mean, I mean, I, I'm wanting to jump through the screen right now. Just kidding. Listen, let's talk about LA Knight for a second, legitimately. Sure. Right? Don't sure me like that. Don't, <laughs> do that to me. Don't do that to me. This is the perfect opportunity, the perfect segue to talk about LA Knight for reals. Let's talk about that segment, dude. The, the master of disguises, LA Knight coming out of nowhere, rocking the wig. Jumping AJ that was stacks. good. That was good. Come on, dude. It is perfect. The more screen... Look, I have a math equation for you. The more screen time you give LA Knight, the better he does, and the better for SmackDown. LA Knight should be the guy that runs SmackDown. And what does that mean? That LA Knight should be respected and continue to be given more opportunities because every single time he knocks it out of the park. His road to WrestleMania should not be this good. There's no stipulations. There's no title on the line. There's no gimmick matches. And yet we're invested to see AJ Styles versus LA Knight in a match that really doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things when it comes to WrestleMania 40. There's no long feud between LA Knight and AJ Styles. It's literally AJ Styles gets pushed aside by LA Knight and that sets off AJ Styles. AJ Styles is injured. LA Knight prevails and continues his popularity, gets two title shots. And all of a sudden AJ Styles is jealous. That's the, literally the only thing. Yes, LA Knight showed up in the home angle invasion. Yes, LA Knight has been out doing, out classing him. But one of my main points of what I enjoy about LA Knight, he is not this vanilla face, baby face going out there. It's like, I deserve a championship shot because it's been my dream for so long to be a champion or I'm going to be better than you. I will prevail. I am the good guy. You're the bad guy. No, he outsmarts and he outwits the heels. He doesn't be like, I'm just going to punch harder type of guy like Cody Rhodes or I'm going to turn super like Seth Rollins. No, he uses his guile to be able to get around and to make the heels look like fools. And I miss that part of wrestling where the faces outsmart them, like the Kurt Angle is going out there with the milk truck. The Stone Cold Steve Austin is going out with the beer truck in his example. And then literally fighting The Rock on a bridge or fighting Booker T like at a supermarket. That's what wrestling is missing. And LA Knight's your gateway. So I'm telling you, if you're right now still not on board, we have plenty of space here on the LA Knight bandwagon. You could pick up a glaze tool, all right? Start your glazing as well. I'm recruiting right now. I Someone said in the comments, like, hey, I'm the ultimate better man for LA Knight. But I'm saying, why do I have to be? Why am I the only one in this community that is champion LA Knight? Why are we hating LA Knight so much, Santi? I want you to go ahead and no play No one. Dude, you, you're you creating this false it's narrative that people hate LA Knight. No one does. It's out there. It's out there. No, it isn't. You've cr- I don't see you you're delusional. Like LA Knight. Well, okay, I don't see you dress up like LA Knight. Where's your LA Knight glasses? Doesn't mean huh? I hate him. Doesn't mean I don't Where's like LA, LA Knight. Shirt? Where's your LA Knight shirt? I have an LA Knight shirt. Go put it on. <laughs> you serious? Yeah. I'll hold it down. <laughs> Let's see if this is true. Anyway, just what I was saying. You know, we like to have fun here. And I just want to take this moment and thank everyone in the Wrestling School community, especially the people on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash Santi's app five dollars gets you an ad free viewing experience you get the episode three days early and at the same time you get to vibe out you get the early raw reviews episodes you get the smackdown reviews as well from Santi you get gaming as well which we're gonna work on and look at him yeah 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 why are you all faded how many times did you watch that I mean it'd be a golden yellow I mean it's old it's an old shirt at this point it's a year old it's from money in the bank ah man he should have won that money in the bank. 
No, dude, it's fine. Dude, move on. It's over. He's in WrestleMania against a bona fide first ballad wrestling, not even WWE, wrestling Hall of Famer. And people want more out of LA Knight. Oh my God, dude. Like, dude, the, that, that is what I, that is the, what is the word that I'm looking for? Put it out. Idiocy of LA Knight fans right oh, now. Wow. The wow. idiocy of LA Knight okay. fans that just keep saying that this is such a this is such an insult to LA Knight. This is so beneath him. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. L AJ Styles beneath LA Knight? Nah, nah. Are you serious? This is LA Knight's biggest match of his career. I know that he's had a match against Roman Reigns for the for the world title, but no one main eventing a PL lead. Yeah, but no one, match of his career. No one was expecting him to win. No one was expecting. No, I stop. No, you didn't. Did. No, you yes, did. did. The liar, yes, did. filthy yes, liar. Yes, well, yes, at least with this, you know, he is. Uh, he, he could be the one standing tall at the end of this feud. And it's the biggest stage that he's ever been on. He's not a sure. side plot for, for somebody else. That's all LA Knight was to Roman Reigns. He was a side plot. He was a side piece. He was the side chick. While we inevitably got back to Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. And you know that I'm right. This at the very late, at the very least, LA Knight is a main protagonist in this story. He isn't just a footnote in somebody else's story. I truthfully thought the feud against The Miz was a lot better than AJ Styles. It's built up a lot better. That was a true I feud. mean, there's a home invasion. We, we got ourselves yeah, the... I mean, the, again, it's all it's LA Knight putting all that over. Yeah, 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 yeah. My uh, question for you is two things, two things here. Okay. First, let's keep the stick on board with AJ Styles, a.k.a. AJ Stacks. Do you think that AJ Stacks is going to be... Like, I, I don't think LA Knight's going to lose, but I think AJ Styles dips into this new evil that he's going to like put the beat down on LA Knight in some kind of way, either Roth or Mania, where he's not going to let this feud go. I don't think this is going to be over. I think this is going to lead all the way into backlash. I think so. I think we, you, you, when I look at some of the matches and feuds that are there that don't have, that don't have to revolve around the championship. This is one of the few that's really there mm -hmm. that you can, that's big enough and has enough star power in it to go beyond WrestleMania. Cause I don't mm. see the Prophets and Lashley doing that. I don't surprise they got a mania match. I honestly, shocked. I feel like they're only getting a mania match because Triple H didn't want to leave Bobby Lashley off again. I think that is I literally agree. the only reason. If it wasn't for the Bobby Lashley star power, that is left off of WrestleMania. 100 percent Now my second question for you. Does Damian Priest cash in at Mania? We talked about LA Knight should have been the one having the the briefcase. Is it Priest's time? It's They're a, built up Priest really strong on Monday Night Raw. They, I mean, sure, but anyone that thinks it's going to be on the night two main event against Cody Rhodes and that the show is going to close with Damian Priest standing tall, uh, buffoon, crazy, no way, no shot. But to to cash in on Drew McIntyre and, ca and, and ruin the whole story of Drew McIntyre, his moment, trying to have his moment in front of, you know, an actual crowd, that'd be pretty good heel heat on Damian Priest. It would be. I think what my prediction, though, for Drew McIntyre is that he's going to be a leader of a new faction soon. I really like that vignette of him at a funeral. For That's some good. reason, that really clicks for me. And him saying that to pray, and he prays, and he kind of has like a weird savior vibe to him. And it's It works a little bit different, though, for Drew McIntyre, because I think he's been spitting these hard, logical truths around the entire time. And I think because of these recent AEW, like people are being let go and people are moving on from the company, I think Malachi Black comes back. I think comes so. Back with Drew McIntyre. I think that's a perfect slot in for Drew McIntyre and Malachi Black. Oh, right that'd there. be a nice, a nice pairing. Right? That'd be a nice yeah, pairing, dude. Malachi and Drew McIntyre. Maybe some that. Buddy Matthews mix into there. Because they strong were strong stable. Yeah, man, because they were doing before um, Malachi Black was fired from WWE, he was doing the Far Cry 5 uh, cult leader character. Yep. He was trying, he was. like, they were just, they, they were just in vignettes. He never actually made it uh, on screen before he got, he got let go, which was a shame, but. I would love for them to revisit that because Drew McIntyre kind of gave me those Far Cry 5 vibes in, yep. in the funeral. So I would love to see that. I'm kind of with you on that one. And at the same time, I think as much as I love Drew, I feel that there is going to be cracks in that armor of people enjoying his hard truths. And at the same time, what a better overcome, like, a, again, a heel always has to be overcome by the face at the end of the day. That's how wrestling makes its money. What a great way for CM Punk to come back to overtake Drew McIntyre when Drew McIntyre has a faction behind him and to give like that great kind of, you know, the shine to the face where he, CM Punk has to overcome Malachi Black, who has that AEW tie-ins with Buddy Matthews as well. That, that'd be really cool, man. I think that'd be, 
that'll be something interesting going forward. And I think that's going to be a feud that could to give some life for CM Punk before he gets to the Seth Rollins. Face. Or we pull or, a WWE pulls a Tony Khan and oh. Malachi Black debuts on WWE Speed on X without any sort of announcements. Just, ah, it's Malachi Black. He's back and he's on speed. Uh, that sounds like he's on drugs. He's on the show uh, on WWE Speed on X yeah. exclusively without announcement. Sean, you think Sean Spears makes his way to the main roster again? Man, he's good. Sean Spears is like, that match with Dijak was fantastic. Um, something tells me no. Something tells me that the long play here with Sean Spears is a coach, is um is a mentor for NXT. I feel I like, like that. I feel like that's the long play with him. I know we're getting closer to the end of the podcast, but I I really want you to sell me on Dijak. I I'm I'm in the dark with Dijak. Oh, body Dij I see these signs that says Dijak push Dijak Dijak over the Rock. There are so many yeah. of these signs out there. First of all, Dijak is the most entertaining follow on Twitter out of every. WWE superstar over employee over and everyone Chelsea? over Drew over Chelsea over Logan it over is Dijak Dijak is Tiffy on Instagram I'd rather follow Tiffy on Instagram but Dijak okay. over everyone on Twitter absolutely he is the goat of wrestling Twitter that's that's selling point number one selling okay. point number two is that he's like a six foot seven bruiser that can do moves like an Eddie Guerrero whenever he wants to he like is a he is a heavyweight luchador sometimes where he's doing backflips, harakarana, springboards, and it all looks super awkward and lanky because he's so big, but it's awesome. But also at the same time, in the snap of a finger, he can turn into that guy that's breaking fingers, that guy that can have broken bones, broken fingers and continue through the match. He reminds me of um, uh, of of um, like a fight club character at times where it doesn't matter like what you do to this guy, what kind of pain you cause him, he's gonna bring you the same level of pain while also hitting you with a springboard or some sort of back flick here or there. He is, to me, in the ring, such a unique talent. I can't compare him to anyone in the main roster, and that is a good thing. When I can't find a clone of you, a copy of you somewhere else, that means you are a, you, you provide a unique selling point that is only unique to you and you alone. On top of that, he's also a very good character worker. Right now, the character that he's doing this like um, grungy uh, Vice City, not Vice City, what's the, the uh, Sin City, Sin City uh, black and white. Uh, noir. noir 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 that's the right. best way to put a character that he's got works so well for him i really believe that he's the entire package i feel like he was one of those guys that vince mcmahon went out of his way to make actively worse by re remember deadpool right when mm -hmm. they sewed his mouth shut for some yeah, reason in that movie yeah. they robbed yeah, him yeah. of everything that made him unique that's what they did with t-bar they robbed him of everything that made him unique. And now he's back to Deadpool. Now he's back to the Dominic Dijakovic Dijak that so many people fell in love with originally in NXT Black and Gold. And now everyone's falling in love with him again, as you can see from all of the signs. That's my yeah, elevator uh, pitch on Dijak. Can I throw out a little bone here? Hit um, me. And I'm going to go ahead and admit something here. And this may be controversial, but I'm not a guy who shies from controversy when it comes to wrestling is cool podcast. Okay. I like Karrion Cross now. Why? Like, what, what's sold on you? Unhinged Karrion Cross, not talking about time, not talking about him being a prophecy, not trying to be high fluted, high level language type of vibe, high promos and whatnot, and just simply being crazy works so well for him. And at the same time, when you have Scarlet on his side, and that's going to work so well, and that whole moment where he destroyed Bobby in the back in the locker room and destroy all that champagne. I like that. Shouldn't be and drinking think, on the job, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> I think good. there's a there's a lot of good things. And the more they make Karrion Cross like an uncharted villain for those video game nerds out there. Good reference. Where he's just like a one note type of character, but he's so unhinged and fun and campy. W. Okay. Lean more into that Jesse Ventura type of vibe that you have in your back pocket that we know you can do so well. I like that carrying cross, and I think that is something that we could chew on. Granted, it's a lower, like it's 
five steps lower on the scale in terms of what, what kind of a heel he is, but the more basic heel vibes he has, I, I enjoy a lot more and I get to understand like, oh, okay, now I get where Karrion Cross is coming. Good enough to be on WrestleMania? Apparently so. What can I, I say? So. What can, what I, can say? I say? Except you're welcome. Sacha, I think let's wrap it up there. I like that. I you good. said that basically Dijak is cool and I said, hey, Karrion Cross is cool. There we go. Folks, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Wrestling is Cool. If you didn't know, this is the second episode of the week because there's also an extra bonus special episode for uh, our WrestleMania predictions that you can find on the channel and any of the podcast services that you're listening to. So don't be confused if you saw two episodes this week. If you did want to get this particular episode and any future Wrestling is Cool episode podcast earlier than everyone else on the planet, where over 600 people are already on Make sure to check out patreon.com slash Santi Zap. The link will be in the description of wherever it is that you're watching or in the pinned comment if you happen to be on YouTube. Come check it out. It's more than just the podcast. There's so much more in there for you that I think that you're going to like and you're going to fall in love with. Sancho, what are you working on as we go into this WrestleMania week? What do you want to tell the people about? I am working on a Sancho Mania shirt. That's right. I've already sent out to get the design. We're making it happen. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. And not only there's going to be more Sancho West merch, but the merch is coming, my friend. It is right, it is right down the pipe. And it's going to be more than two shirts. More than zero <laughs> shirts, all right? Yeah, the bar is high here, happen. folks. More than two shirts. Let me know in the comments if you want to get it, all right? It's going to happen. I guarantee it. And at the same time, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be one of the best. Uh, one thing I want to know real quick. Best wrestlers with, with leather vests. Number one. Who's your number one? Uh, uh, oh, man. 2003 Rock. Scott Hall. That's a good one. Dumbo. That's anyway, a good one too. That's a good one, too. That, that's what I'm working on. And it always, 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 Sancho West Wrestling and TikTok were so close to 10,000, which means yeah. I could... Yeah, I could live stream alongside. It'd be really awesome to hit that before WrestleMania 40. So you I could got make it. some bag. You've make a got bag. it. You've got it. Folks, for me, you just come it. check out you the, the watch alongs wherever you might be Twitch, TikTok, or YouTube. Yeah, where are you? Are Good Lord. I'm everywhere, dude. I'm everywhere. I'm are you going to run out of like Santi? All right. Also, as well, fun game in the comments. Give me more variations of Santi Zap's <laughs> TikTok names. Se Senor Santi Zap? I still haven't <laughs> used that one. <laughs> Dude, you gotta use, you gotta do the um, Xbox gamer tag. Big X, <laughs> XX, little X, underscore. 420 Sonny life. <laughs> yes, dude. Yes. Oh, folks, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Take care and be wonderful people. Folks, thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of Wrestling is Cool. An extra special thank you goes out to the patrons at the $15 tier who are helping this show happen on a regular basis. So thank you. A special thank you goes out to 2022 Benjamin, Abel Rodriguez, Adrian Liu, uh, Anita Max Wynn, Ben Calloway, Bryce Burt, Buxo, Callum Wood, Callum Wood again? I think you're in there twice, buddy. Might want to double check that. CB, Chris the Postman, Connor Williamson, David Miller, Evo, Isatch, Gavin Alves, Ileana, Gene, Jordan Gentry, Jordan Lynch, Juice Man Jeremy, Lil Shifu, Lucas Wittenhagen, Mako Mac Gaming, Malik Graham, Mohammed Akram El Madawi. We have Sancho on the line there as well. I'm just doing the Patreon shout out. We have Monte Moore, Nicholas Kyle, uh, Ollie, Owen Miller, Robert Dalton, Rodolfo Reyes, Ryan Yelovic, Silver Football, Stephen Rhodes, Stephen. And me? I'm pretty sure I, I butchered that. My bad. Stucky. Super Malachi Galaxy. Uh, the Matter. We have Joe Man 21. The King Slayer. Tom Lehman. Two Crown. Wesley Simpson. Whip One. Xavier Iscardo. Uh, Yeg Nori. Yellow Wonton. York V2. And Zarek Zito. That is the most amount of Patreon producers that we've woo. ever had. Woo! Woo! Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm butchering this. Where is Sancho? I thought I had I you here. There you are. <laughs> Thank Th you. Thank you, Patriots. Thank you so much for supporting.